Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today we're going to talk about insect problems in your garden, maybe cover some diseases. But basically after five or six straight days of rain, couldn't really get out in the garden and do anything, I'm looking my garden over now and there's all kinds of damage. So I'm going to show you what the damage is, what causes it, and we'll talk about solutions. Obviously when you see something like this, you have a caterpillar chewing insect, chewing holes in your leaves, different patterns, and you just want to turn the leaf over. As soon as you see the holes, you want to start looking. And right here, to the right of my thumb, you can see a green caterpillar. That's the cabbage looper. That's the insect that comes from that white moth that flies around psychotically. It lays eggs and then you get the green cabbage looper. Coming over here, the pattern is just really, really more intense. So many more holes and you just have larger worms or insects under there and you can see one right there. Different color, different striping. It's probably, um, I mean, they're all from moths or butterflies of, or something. There's one in there. And they all basically, well, there's two more. That's a third one right above my thumbnail or the nail of my thumb. There's a fourth one. There's a fifth one. So it's basically this red Russian kale. There's a nice size one under there. There's three. And these are probably going to turn into butterflies. I just don't know which ones. But they are chowing away. There's another one, different color worm. And it's amazing how quickly they come. I mean, five or six days and not really being able to spray. There's one right up there. So when you see this pattern, you know you've got something chewing on the other underside. So we'll clean this up, talk to you about treatment. Let's go look for some more problems. So here's some of my container kale. When you start seeing it yellow, there's usually something on the undersides sucking the sap out of the leaves. And when you turn this over, oh, that just flew away. I don't know if you saw that. But that was a white speck. These are white flies right above my thumb, a white speck, a white speck. There's more flying around. And there's a nice, whoa, there you go. You can see right to the right of my thumb, all those light white cottony looking marks. They're from white flies, probably eggs, active ones. And more of the caterpillars. I mean, just tons of them. We'll get to treatment shortly. Coming over here, less chewing. The curl kale, for some reason, ha there's white flies in there. So the curl kale seems to have a better resistance to, and if I do that, you see the white flies flying around. So the curl kale seems to have a better resistance to um, the caterpillars. Not really resistance. I think the moths just will fly over to the completely flat leaf versions. Here's a red Russian kale over here and leave the curled alone. But if they don't have this, then you're going to go over to your curled kales. More chewing insects. Completely devastated. I mean, you can just see they're all in there. Egg sacs, all kinds of stuff. All right, so we've identified the chewing caterpillars, the white flies. And when you find them on some of your kale plants, you want to go check all of them because whatever's been laying the eggs, there's white flies on these leaves too. Whatever's been laying the eggs on one plant, you can see the nice markings right there. That's a white fly. Is going to all of your plants. And if your neem oil's run out or your treatment has run out, there's a caterpillar right there. Everything is hatching, and that happens. When you get a period of time where you can't tend your garden, you go on vacation for seven days, you get rain for four, five, six days, everything is gonna go crazy. Let's go take a look at the tomatoes. The tomatoes have all cracked. They're being eaten by insects, and that typically comes from a heavy rain. You can't do anything about it. A lot of people ask me, well, my tomatoes are cracking, what am I gonna do? And you can't do a whole lot. You want to start checking the leaves of your tomato plants. These were sprayed pretty well before the rains came. I've been experimenting with hydrogen peroxide on some plants, but you're looking for 
spots. I don't think that's anything to worry about. But you're really inspecting everything for diseases. Here's a watermelon. I'll be doing a video on that. These leaves are starting to get some yellowing in there. And if I turn them over, I'm probably concerned there might be spider mites. The only way you can, well, you can see lots of little black specks on there. That's not a good sign. The only way you can find spider mites usually is with a magnifying glass. But there's probably something chewing on the undersides of these leaves. I'll show you how to take care of that. But the whole idea is when you come back from vacation, after some bad weather, lots of rain, get out into your garden and really start looking around. Fortunately, I am not seeing a whole lot of new spotting on my tomato plants, which could be a good sign. All right, so let's get to the cures and the fixing and just how you clean up this mess. First step, remove all the leaves that are being chewed on. You can see one of the caterpillars hanging right there, right above my finger. Remove that. There's the white moth, by the way, that leaves, lays the eggs of the green cabbage looper. Under this side, you can see the white specks right near my thumb, and that one's crawling around. White fly, remove that. These leaves look pretty healthy. We're going to leave them, come and spray. Don't worry about your kale. It will grow new leaves out the side, and we'll be able to take care of that want to come over to all the leaves and start removing them. One thing you can do too is do a nice big harvest. Clean out all the leaves that you want to eat, wash them, save them, bag them, and really remove the leaves because we're going to come and treat this, take care of everything. The less leaves we have, less places for the insects to hide, the better the treatment will be. So let me clean up this whole area and then we'll get to spraying. Here's all the kale I removed out of this section. Remove it. Don't try and keep a few leaves that are going to probably succumb to the white flies or the caterpillars anyway. You want to remove the leaves, strip them down. You can see how I stripped away everything on the kale plants over there. It's only July 26th. Kale is a cool weather crop. It can take a frost. Tons of leaves are going to come back to these plants. Strip away any damaged leaves, any leaves that look good. Remove even more cook them. You want to bring it down to something like this. I'll explain why in a second. You can see here new kale leaves are coming up on this stalk. Totally stripped down. Get rid of the stems too. By removing all the leaves you don't give the problematic insects a habitat. It's also easier for the good insects to come in, find them, remove them. Don't try and fight to save an entire plant that's infested with white flies or with worms. Just trust me, do it this way because in two or three weeks you're going to have plenty of leaves coming back in here. So once we remove everything, we're removing leaves that we're going to cook and eat today. Remove the tender leaves from the stems, cut them up in ribbon style, they're going to go in at the end. Cook the diced up stems about 10 minutes and then add in your potatoes. Those are blue potatoes even though they're purple. And then you're going to cook all this for about 20 minutes or until tender to your like. Add in the leaves another 15 minutes and I'll show you what that looks like. After about 20 or 30 minutes, just add in the kale leaves. You could add in a little bit of water if you want, if you want them to steam a little bit. And then you're just going to cook this down. And after about 30, 40 minutes is what you end up with. Much better to use the leaves of the greens than to leave them on there, cover them with chemicals, try and fight off the infestation. Just harvest everything. And again, four, six, eight weeks, you'll have plenty of kale coming back. And we're also removing leaves that are problematic. First thing you do, get your hose, come inside, and just spray everything down. Really wash the leaves, the stems, anything weak is going to fall to the ground. Harder for that insect to reestablish, but we're going to wash the plants. So let me do that, then we'll come back with the sprays, and then we'll move on to another section. Okay, the next step is to spray. I'm going to use my neem oil spray. I'll link the video that shows you how to uh, use the recipe. So we've removed the damaged leaves. We stripped away good leaves that we're going to cook. We're leaving enough leaves on there for photosynthesis so the plant can collect the sun, start sprouting new leaves. And basically what happened with me is I spray every seven to ten days. They were due for a spray. The rains came. 
I didn't spray, 14 days go by, the insects come in. So you want to spray on a routine always. When you're dealing with an infestation, spray the undersides with the neem oil, the top sides, is you want to spray about every five days. You really want to wipe out the life cycle of these plants. Stop hatching insects, hatching eggs, make sure nothing's around to lay more eggs. So you want to do this every five days for three cycles. We're going to do this over 15 days. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you'll see in my tour videos how well these plants come back. So I'm going to spray down the rest of the plants I removed the leaves and I'll show you the other kale plants I was working on. Now for the watermelons and for some of my bean plants, which I don't think I showed, they might have spider mites or the smaller, almost microscopic insects. You can see them, of course, with a magnifying glass. I can't go and remove all the leaves because my melons need those. It's a different kind of plant than the kales and collard greens and stuff like that. But the same thing. First you start with water. Really blast the underside. I'm going to do this every two or three days for about a week. You're washing away a lot of the smaller insects that start at the bottom, they lay eggs, do their thing, and then they work their way up the plant. By washing them down like this, by getting the undersides, because when rain falls it doesn't get the undersides, they're sheltered, you're going to knock back a lot of them. And then I'm going to come under here every five days and I'm just going to use a peppermint oil spray. I'll link that video too. The peppermint oil is more of a repellent. It's really hard to kill spider mites. And when you put insecticides on there, Sometimes the, the mites are resistant and then it kills the good insects that want to come and eat them. So this is just one way to take care of spider mites. Okay, we have one more thing to do. This is the best way to treat caterpillars, the chewing worms, white flies on your kale, your collard greens. This also holds true for cabbages, broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, cauliflower, all in the same family. The chewing insects love those, the white flies love those. Remove the leaves that are damaged. Don't try and fight to save them. Take the leaves that you can eat, leave a couple on there for photosynthesis, and then spray the undersides with water, and then come back with your neem oil spray or whatever spray you want to use. And again, always test spray. I know that neem oil works really well for these types of plants. The next thing that we want to do is water everything in with a water-soluble fertilizer. Do this every 10 to 14 days. We want to get leaf growth back, so look for something that has some nitrogen in there. I took the leaves off pretty harshly off of here. Again, please subscribe because when I do the tour, you're going to be surprised at how well these all come back. You know, and you want to give them probably, feed them for the next four to six weeks every 10 to 14 days with the water soluble fertilizer. But I really took care of everything. You don't want the infestation, you can still see white flies flying around, so they'll be taken care of when they start to land and they'll be taken care of when I do this again in five days. Again, every five days for three cycles you want to wipe out the life cycle. By doing something that looks a little bit harsh, you're really saving yourself time, effort, and heartache. Because you'll stop the white flies, you'll stop the chewing insects, they're not going to spread to the rest of your garden, and really in about four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, you're going to have plenty of kale coming back to your garden. Hope you enjoyed the video. Gives you some idea of what to look for if you've been away on vacation or you haven't been able to get out into the yard. But go out right away, inspect, take care of the problems, and you'll be a lot happier down the line. Don't try and save something that just can't be saved. Get rid of it. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com.